The US Army recently test fired one of two Iron Dome defense systems acquired in the last two years. According to a statement by the Program Executive Office Missiles in Space, soldiers from the 343 Air Defense Artillery Battalion engaged eight cruise missile surrogate targets as part of a coordinated performance, test, and live fire event. Viewers may note that the U.S. signed an estimated $373 million contract with Israel in August 2019 for the procurement of two Iron Dome batteries. The U.S. Army received the first system in November 2020 and the second in January 2021. As per official disclosure, the U.S. Army plans to deploy the systems as an interim cruise missile defense solution while continuing to acquire and enduring indirect fire protection capability IFPC increment 2 system in this video defense updates analyzes why the US has acquired Iron Dome from Israel let's get started this video is sponsored by War Thunder the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account. The US Army had finalized the deal to bring Israel's famed Iron Dome to protect soldiers and assets deployed abroad in hostile territories. As per reports, the contract included 12 launchers, two radars, two combat management systems, and 240 interceptor missiles. While the Iron Dome provides protection against several kinds of aerial threats, U.S. Army is especially interested in its ability to take out incoming cruise missiles. Iron Dome reportedly beat other short-range air defense systems in a review conducted by the Pentagon. As per reports, two options have been evaluated apart from Iron Dome. First is the National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System NASAMS. This is a joint effort between America's Raytheon and Norway's Kongsberg. The second is the upgraded variant of Multi-Mission Launcher MML. The Iron Dome system is the lowest layer of Israel's multi-layered air and missile defense umbrella. It's a mobile, all-weather, air defense system developed by Rafael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aerospace Industries. It consists of mainly three components, radar, battle management component, and missile launcher. The system uses the radar to detect incoming projectiles. The radar tracks the projectile and sends information to the battle management component. The battle management component examines where the incoming projectiles will hit and if the area of impact is estimated to fall in its purview, it commands the missile launcher to fire interceptors to neutralize the target in midair. Iron Dome has a first-of-its-kind multi-mission launcher that's designed to fire a variety of interceptor missiles. The interceptor is chosen depending on the threat. Iron Dome's Tamir interceptor missiles can strike down incoming threats launched from ranges of 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers to 44 miles or 70 kilometers. Tamir missile is equipped with electro optical sensors and steering fins with proximity fuse blast warheads. Each Iron Dome battery includes three to four stationary launchers with 20 Tamir missiles 
and a battlefield radar. A single battery can defend up to nearly 60 square miles. Iron Dome is considered to be the most used missile defense system. Ten Iron Dome batteries protect Israel. According to Israel, it's been used to intercept targets with a greater than 90% success rate since it was deployed in 2011. Though the data regarding success rate is often challenged by critics, there is no doubt the system has seen extensive real-world usage. Even in the recent skirmish with Hamas, Iron Dome has been instrumental in protecting civilians. For Israel, Iron Dome's main objective is to neutralize rockets and other artillery rounds. But for the U.S. Army, will act primarily as a defense against cruise missiles. So there is an important tactical difference, and the U.S. military has a plan to address this. The two acquired batteries of Iron Dome will be tested and operationally fielded and will be used to identify how Iron Dome can be used as part of the U.S. Army's indirect fires protection capability and American air defense architecture when compared to how it's currently being used by Israel for countering incoming rockets and missiles at short range. Iron Dome is a unique asset. The fact that Iron Dome has seen significant usage is low cost and was immediately available, making it an excellent solution for the U.S. Army's needs. Currently, the U.S. Army's primary air defense weapon is the Patriot surface-to-air missile system, but Patriot interceptors cost around $2 million each. The U.S. Army needed something that's much cheaper so that enough quantity of interceptors could be deployed. This is where Iron Dome comes into the picture. Tamir Interceptor, used by Iron Dome, has a reported unit cost of $100,000 to $150,000. This means a battery of Iron Dome, consisting of 20 Tamir interceptors, can be deployed for the cost of about a single Patriot interceptor missile. This makes it far more cost-effective. Another important aspect is that Iron Dome is readily available to America. Iron Dome has received quite a bit of funding from the U.S. government, and America's Raytheon actually manufactures 70% of Tamir interceptors. Iron Dome was selected as it satisfied all the requirements, including the cost. It remains to be seen how it fits into the U.S. Army's scheme of things. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.